Hey guys, welcome back to Learn Python the Hard Way. In this exercise, exercise 13, we're going to take a look at parameters, unpacking and variables. As always, you're going to find the link to the current exercise in the description below. Uh, this chapter is part of the paid section of the book, so if you don't have the book, feel free to just um, follow along with the video. So in this exercise, um, we will build on top of what we did in the previous exercises. In this exercise, actually, we are going to work with modules. And we're going to pass in some command line arguments. So what is an argument? Um, what we already saw in the previous exercises is that when we entered Python, Python 3 or Python 3.6 space, and then the name of the Python file that we want to execute that we passed in after the version of Python that specific um, file name. And that's what's called an argument that we're using when we are executing our file, for example. So let's get started by typing out this particular code file here. And as always, I have my terminal open. You can open that if you're using a Mac, for instance, um, by pressing Command and Space key and then typing out terminal. So previously we created a folder here and now we can get started by opening a new code file and I'm using Visual Studio Code here. So I'm going to type out code space and then the name of the file. We're going to work on exercise 13. So let's call it x13.py for Python and confirm. And this is going to open a new Python file. And from here, let's get started by first of all, importing argv from the sys module here. All right, next we're going to define three different variables. First, a uh, script first, second, third. Designing it to argv. And then we're going to print out four different lines. And after the print statement here, we're going to insert the variables. Let's type that correctly, all right. And finally, we print out your third variable as and we follow it up with the third argument here. All right, so here, just to explain the code, on the first line, we are using an import uh, to import an external library from um, to our script from the Python feature set. So this helps us to keep our program small by not providing all capabilities, all functionalities within Python itself. Um, so our programs can still load quickly and there's not too much space required, but we are still able to, of course, incorporate additional capabilities by using those kind of import statements. So argv is the argument variable, which we're importing here, a standard name in programming, um, which is also used in many other language languages. And this variable holds the argument that you pass to your Python script when you run it. So for example, if we take a look again at um, what we did before, if we ran a code, we, for example, typed in Python and then the name of the file. So that would be um, the argument variable that we pass in. So line three that we have here, unpacks argv here. Uh, so that rather than holding all the arguments, it gets assigned to four variables that you can work with. All right, so that means once we run our code file, we would then um, here, first of all, insert the script as the first variable, um, and then we can continue it like with first, second, third, for example. So with the additional argument variables, um, 
that we want to pass in, which will then be printed out in separate rows here. And actually, instead of calling it features, um, this is actually called, not called features, but we would call it a module. And we import modules, so the different libraries, so to speak. All right, so let's continue and actually run, run our code. And let me just clear the screen for now. So we're gonna write Python 3.6 to run that version, then the file name, the name of the script. Oh, let me just save this first of all, like this, all right. Um, and then first, second, third. Let's confirm. So, and now we can uh, compare our results here. So the, the script is called, this is the name of the script, exercise13.py. The first variable is first, the second variable is second, and uh, your third variable is third. So exactly those arguments here that we passed in are basically assigned and printed out. And that's how we can provide or work with um, those kind of, of arguments, those kind of command line arguments that we can provide. So let's run it again with some additional, some other input. Instead of typing the specific Python version, so 3.6, we can just type out Python 3, and then it's gonna use um, basically the latest version of Python, which currently is Python 3.9. So here again, the first one that's important that we actually pass in the name of the script so that we executed, and then the other ones are just different this time. And again, it um, basically uses the variables here, the argument variables, and um, prints them out in the respective lines. All right, let's continue and run it again with some other variables. So in this case, apple, orange, and uh, grapefruit and again apple orange and grapefruit are assigned here and printed out all right however if we don't provide the correct number of arguments we will encounter an error so if we type out python 3.6 exercise 13.py first second so note that we only pass in three um, command line arguments instead of four so here the, th the fourth one, which is called third here, uh, is empty. In this case, if we try to run it, then we'll encounter an error because um, it says here it expected four command line arguments, but it only got three um, because these are exactly the three that we provided here. And we need to add an additional one so that it's a correct number. All right, so that's a curriculum for this exercise. Let's continue with the study rules. So the first exercise here is to try to give fewer than three arguments to our script. So that's basically what we just did, but let's just do it again with um, another example. So first of all, the name of the file, and then let's just type one additional one. And then we get the error here that we only got two command line arguments, but uh, our script expected four. So that's why we get the error. So let's write a script that has fewer arguments and one that has more. Make sure you give the unpacked variables good names. All right, so um, let's update this here and let's first of all just add one fewer command line arguments. So I'm just gonna remove this here. So now we only have three command line arguments that we are working with and also three print statements. So if we save this here and head back to our terminal, we can run that again. So by typing out Python 3, followed by the name of the script. And then um, of course we can provide two more arguments. So let's say first and second. And then we have those three lines as, as opposed to those four lines being printed out. And then um, let's just undo that real quick. And let's provide an, an additional argument here. So I'm gonna call it four. So we have five command line arguments in total. And now we can say the fourth variable is, and then of course we would call that fourth. All right, and uh, let's go back and run that one more time. And in this case, we would say exercise 13.py as the first command line argument, first, second, 
third and fourth. And now we have a total of five print statements that are printed out. Okay, so the next one is combine the input with argv to make a script that gets more input from a user. Don't overthink it, just use argv to get something and input to get something else from the user. Okay, so we have we can basically build on top of this here to print out the first few, uh, few lines. And then we can use input. We can ask uh, the user for some text. And we can st um, store that in, for example, a variable called user input. And then let's just print it out using printf here. So your input was, and let's use curly braces. And in here we can then use that variable. Let's save this up. Let's hand back. And um, as previously, we first of all provide those uh, this total of five command line arguments, so the name of the script, and then four additional ones. Let's press enter, and now it prints out as as before those five print statements. And now it's asking us for some additional text. So let's just provide string here. Press enter, and then it's printing out the input was. This is this is great. All right, so, and then the last exercise here is, remember that modules give you features. Modules, modules, remember this because we will need it later. All right, so we have modules that we work with. So um, here, for example, this is module, and um, we can then provide here, it, or basically import from such a module uh, additional functionalities like this argv list. Um, that we are using to um, basically work with command line arguments. Let's take a look at some common student questions. The first one is when I run when I run it, I get value error, need more than one value to unpack. Remember that an important skill is paying attention to details. If you look at what you should see section, uh, you see that I run the script with parameters on the command line. You should replicate how I ran it exactly. So exactly, so we need to over make sure that when we run the script, we provide those command line arguments and we need to provide the right number. What's the difference between argv and input? The difference has to do with where, where the user is required to give input. If they give you a script inputs on the command line, which is what we did here, uh, then you use argv. If you want them to input using the keyboard while the script is running, then use the input. Um, function here. So that's basically here we combine both. We use the command line arguments to provide input um, through the command line and then here we used the input method to basically get some, some user input when the script is running. Other command line arguments strings. Yes, they come in, in as strings even if you type numbers on the command line. Use int to convert them just like with int input. Yeah, so we always need to make sure that, of course, if we type this out here, it would be considered a string, so text. Uh, but then if we provide numbers, we would need to convert it if you want to, do, for example, do some calculations based on that. How do you use the command line? You should have learned to use it very quickly and fluently by now, but if you need to learn it as, at this stage, then read the command line crash course at the end of the book. All right, so, I mean, we, we learned about that previously, how to, for example, create a new directory and navigate to the directory, which is uh, what we did in, in one of the previous videos. Um, but yeah, the appendix can be helpful to take a closer look at it. I can't combine argv with input. Um, don't overthink it, just step two lines at the end of the script that uses input to get something and then print it. From that, start playing with more ways to use both in the same script. All right, that's basically what we did here in the one of the previous exercises. Why can't I do this input, question mark, equals x because it's backward to how it should work. Do it the way um, I do it and it will work. So here we can see how you, we would do it properly. We use the input function and we type in uh, some text that we want to display and when the input is provided it's always assigned to the value on the left side which is this variable here and from here we can then start using it. So it's always the input that we get on the right side is assigned to the um, to the variable on the left. So in this case here, we 
if we try to do that, then we would try to assign x to input and x is not defined and it doesn't make sense to assign that to input. So that is why, why we have to flip it around basically. All right, and that's it for exercise 13. And see you guys in the next video for the next exercise.